The radar room is no newcomer to super regenerative VHF radio circuits using single valves, as after much time experimenting with several simple circuits, one was put forward to the radio magazine Practical Wireless for publication. This duly appeared in the January 2019 issue and was aimed specifically at the amateur radio market as a retro-styled project essentially for use on the 2 meter, that's 144 MHz amateur band. The reason for settling for this particular circuit was it performed well, with no adjustable regeneration control and a tuning control feel very much akin to a multi-valve superhead. The two controls on the front panel being just a tuning control and an AF volume pot. Whilst anybody looking at this might say that two valves were used in the circuit, not one, or even three if you consider that one of the valves used is actually two valves in a single envelope, then technically you're right. But I should point out the second physical valve, i.e. the EF91, was only included to boost the output to a level that would drive a small loudspeaker via a suitable matching transformer if required. Before we choose a suitable circuit to build into our radar room universal chassis, Here's another idea for the embryonic practical wireless project that didn't happen in the end. Why? Because the chosen circuit for practical wireless featured two valves that were easily obtainable, whereas the one you see here used a World War II VR137 valve, which would be significantly more difficult to obtain today. Whilst their three valves are visible in the temporary looking chassis, one of these is an HT rectifier, with the other being an ECL80 output valve to drive a small loudspeaker for everyday use. In this circuit, the VR137 on its own can in fact drive a pair of high impedance headphones to a usable sound level. However, unlike the practical wireless project, this circuit uses a single valve to do the job of two, i.e. it oscillates at two frequencies simultaneously. For anybody not familiar with super regenerative receiver circuit techniques, then there's plenty of online descriptions if you're curious. Controls to this circuit on the front panel are a large tuning control, a regeneration adjustment, and of course an AF volume control. Okay, so back to our single valve radio ideas. The reasoning behind adding this particular project to our list was that a simple one valve FM tuner would probably be something that few will have already tried out and would be quite a novelty to see working. The idea originally considered was to remake the VR137 project, but it felt this valve is too obscure for the average experimenter to want to try and source. It's therefore decided to include a number of readily available valves which might be tried and tested. You can see a row here on the left is the wartime VR137 triode. Next to it is the classic EF50 or VR91 amongst several other names it had at the time. The later EF136, an advance on the VR91. The tiny 955 triode, which is a classic US acorn valve as they were known. The popular EF91 from the 1950s. And lastly, a brand new Chinese sourced 6AK5. Having done all the experimentation on this lineup back to back, it was interesting to observe that whilst most perform within the FM band from 88 to 108 MHz to some degree, the best were significantly better than the lesser valves as they gave noticeably easier tuning and more stations receivable for starters. Initially there seemed no point in including the results of the valves that didn't work too well until we reached the disappointing results in the EF91, a valve we thought would work well. At this stage it felt it was useful to see how poorly the circuit might work with a less than satisfactory valve used in this simple circuit. Within this old publication from 1948 we find a circuit that I'd always wanted to try. This particular one I'd seen in several old radio publications and was for a Flowelling Super Regenerator VHF1 valve radio. Up to now this had almost seemed too simple to work properly but how wrong I was to be proven. So you can see the same circuit appeared in the Ultra Shortwave Handbook from 1946, as well as one in the 1948 Modern Battery Valve Manual. Evidently a much used design. In these three examples, frequency coverage was stated to be anywhere from the 160 meter band, that's around 2 MHz, to 3 meters, i.e. around 100 MHz. Start things off, let's have a quick listen to the results obtainable on a few feet of aerial wire for the VR137 with a clone of the Super Regen set you saw using three valves. Here we're using it in the radar room universal chassis with the 90 volt HT. Note that the signal strength we have here is very poor. We have an FM aerial on the roof to receive a decent reliable signal, so it's somewhat surprising that a single valve with a few feet of wire as an aerial works at all. The tuning capacitor we're using here in the chassis is in fact a 50 picofarad device. Not something recommended for tuning is extremely difficult as you can see. Apologies for the hum from the ancient test audio amp by the way. Keeping it going. And if you want to 
them, give them a mention, or if you need a mention yourself. Quite a decent number of stations received considering both the simplicity of the circuit and the shortness and location of the aerial. Now for the results of our experiments with the other valves in the lineup. First EF50 or VR91 if you like. Sadly this valve wouldn't oscillate quite at the frequency we require to show any results even after trying a number of different examples. Whilst it will amplify up to around 100 MHz, only managed to secure oscillations to in the middle 80 megs. Not quite high enough to reach the LF end of the broadcast band. Having made a couple of wiring changes to the valve holder, a VR136 borrowed from this RF27 unit was inserted. Now we have results. Although only a couple of stations at the bottom end of the band, still this is better than none at all. Next try was the Acorn 955 triode valve. With an expected frequency response of up to around 400 MHz, it's not surprising that the results were excellent for our simple little circuit. Note that in the absence of a proper Acorn valve socket, we twisted the pins with wire to mount it. The EF91 pentode valve was next and we really thought that it would perform well in this circuit but it was not to be. Indeed a couple of stations were tuned in in the end but tuning was really fussy and the reaction didn't seem to like to be in any position in addition having huge amounts of hysteresis. Whilst I'm sure this valve could work well in a circuit such as this, I feel there'd need to be a number of significant changes to the component values to make this a reality. Remember that the following video will reflect this. The 6AK5 was another valve we were sure would work okay but were disappointed once again. 
A good selection of stations were indeed tunable, but the volume level was very low and the valve was drawing almost an unmeasurable amount of HD current from the 90 volts. We tried a much older US made valve, just in case the new one was faulty, but the results were identical. As the original plan behind this project was to show a different selection of valves working in an almost identical circuit, we set the 6AK5s aside and settled for a new and boxed JRC9003 valve, US Navy stocks from October 1944. Seeing as this valve is essentially an acorn pentode in a B7G based glass envelope as opposed to R955 which is a triode, we hoped it perform equally as well. You can judge the results for yourself. That's the last example of a simple VHF radio we'll be looking at today. I hope if you're still watching, you might feel the urge to have a go and make one of these simple circuits yourself. If you do, then take a moment to look at the wiring diagram in the pictures here of the Radar Room in-house FM radio that's often used on a day-to-day -day basis. A few important points if you're relatively new to building VHF gear. Number one, keep all wiring as short and direct as possible. That's why we put our valves above the chassis, to keep the wiring from the inductor and tuning capacitor as short as practical. Two, don't give any wires any unnecessary sharp bends. Three, if you're unsure as to whether your set is working on the right frequency, start by using a larger than necessary tuning capacitor, and if need be, make a couple of extra coils with one turn more and one turn less to experiment with. Four, with simple circuits like this, everything seems to need optimising such as the aerial, as if the thing might not oscillate if the aerial trimmer is set a little wrong. 5. Last remember that not all valves will work. In my practical wireless project I spent a few sentences giving hints on what almost identical valves will and will not work. Some ECC81s might not, whereas all GEC A2900s all should. ECC83s definitely won't, and so on. Any feedback or questions I'll try to respond to in the next look at the video. Good luck and thanks for watching.